Hi, my name is Thomas Maurer. I work as a cloud advocate at Microsoft. And in this video today, I'm going to show you how you can manage your Azure resources using Cloud Shell. So stay tuned. So first, let me talk a little bit about automation and why it's important. So obviously you want to do automation to save time, to lower the uh, costs and the time you invest for, especially for the tasks you do a lot of times, right? And the other thing you want to do is uh, keep consistency with the things you do. Um, especially if you look at me, for example, if I have to do something five times, uh, you can expect it that I have uh, at the end four different versions of it just because I forget stuff. Um, I don't do stuff in the same order. Um, and so I don't get that consistency. But if I automate that and write it down, um, I usually get a consistent result. And so I do a lot of automation or automation is done when you have to manage resources at scale. You have to do configurations of different resources and you want to keep that consistency or you want to do orchestration where you first do step one, then step two and step three. And you want to make sure that everything happens in the same order or, or like the second step happens after the first step um, finished, right? So we give you a couple of different tools to manage Azure. Um, obviously, we give you some management tools like the Azure Portal, Azure CLI, Azure PowerShell, and the Azure Cloud Shell, which is basically a combination um, tool of all of the other three, if you will. Um, and that's what we're going to talk about a lot. We also give you other automation tools like the ARM te Azure ARM templates and resource manager templates, or we give you things like Azure Automations or Azure, uh, Azure Automation or Azure Functions. And this session is not about, okay, I'm going to use CLI, why I'm using CLI versus PowerShell or why you would PowerShell. Uh, we really give you the choice, um, whatever you prefer, right? So if you're uh, coming from other CLIs, you probably prefer the Azure CLI to manage your Azure resources. But if you come from PowerShell and you want to more have an object-based um, approach to manage resources, then you're probably going to be more familiar with the Azure PowerShell module. And again, we give you the choice, um, to, to use both of them in, in the cloud shell as well as on your uh, device. So one of the problems we see, and I think you're all familiar with this one, is if we use um, management tools or computer, like all the tools, modules, um, PowerShell modules and things like that on our devices, we always need to keep them up to date, right? If we don't have something, we need to install it. We need to find the right version. We need to get, update them to the latest version. And this is very time intensive, right? Um, so we want to change that. And that's exactly what one of the points Cloud Shell can help. So Cloud Shell basically gives you a container it's a Linux-based container. Uh, we run thousands of them in Azure. And as soon as you uh, start a Cloud Shell, we assign to you one of these containers. And they're already pre-authenticated. So everything with the authentication, with your user credentials, is already set up for you to use. Uh, we give you a bash and a PowerShell experience. And then we also give you a private and secure environment. So the container is only for you. And after uh, you used your container and you don't need it anymore, we shut it down, remove it. Um, so you get your private secure environment. And then we already pre-install common languages like .NET, but also Python, Java and others. Um, so you can manage the, the things you want to and use the languages you want to. We also give you a whole set of tools um, like for example, again, we have PowerShell, we have the CLI, but we also have third party tools. And I'm going to show you a little bit later uh, what that looks like. So let's have a look at Cloud Shell in action and let's dive in into um, in a quick demo. And the first one I want to show you a little bit is how you explore the shell. And I'm going to show you how you set up the shell for the first time use. I will use consistent uh, already existing resources. Um, so everything will, bit, will be a little bit faster. So the first time you use Cloud Shell, you will go through the same steps, but then um, it will take a little bit more time because it creates for you all the storage accounts and things you need. And then um, it, uh, later on, if you use them again, it will get faster uh, to connect to that. So let's have a quick look. Again, we are here in the Azure portal. Um, today I'm using the new uh, 
Edge version or Insider version based on, on the Chromium project. Um, and you can see this is the Azure portal. And when I wanted to start Cloud Shell, an easy thing to do is just to go up there um, in the top bar and click on Cloud Shell. And this will bring up this Cloud Shell window and you can see uh, for the first start, I can choose if I want to use Bash or PowerShell. I can change that later, by the way. So let's start with Bash here. I choose the subscription and I can also go to advanced settings to, for example, change the region where my container should run or my Cloud Shell should run. I already have a resource group for my Cloud Shell. Um, so I'm going to use that one. Again, you can create a new one if you're first time use. I also have a storage account and I also have a uh, file share already ready to use. So I'm just going to say attach storage. And this will take a while. Um, this will now connect me to a container. It will connect my container to the Azure file share um, and will my, my create my environment uh, like I left it before. Again, if you create a new one, you get a complete new environment. It will set up the storage accounts and everything for you. So in a couple of seconds, um, we're ready here. And now I have the CLI. First thing I do, I customize it a little bit so people can better see. So let's do the font size to large and the font type. Perfect. And now I have this CLI. And again, this is a bash CLI. So I can use uh, things like the Azure CLI um, directly from here. So I can start using that uh, to manage my Azure resources. I can also do simple things like browse um, the file uh, system. Now let's go to Cloud Drive here to that folder. And then in that folder, you can see I have a scripts folder. In that script folder, I already have two files, two scripts, if you will. And I can just start, for example, run one of them. And this one creates a new Linux VM. And this, um, again, runs now to create that VM. Uh, we're not going to uh, stay here until that's finished, obviously. So let's go and switch to shell.azure.com. And I'm going to connect here or reconnect here to that shell experience. So this connects to my same um, uh, container experience I had before. Let me change the size here. And this time I'm going to switch from Bash to PowerShell. I'll quickly confirm that I want to use PowerShell instead of Bash now. And this will take a, take a moment to load everything. And after that, is, you can also see that it's automatically authenticating me to the Azure with my account. I logged into this website um, and then we can start using PowerShell. So if I can, for example, I can do like get command, get ACVM. It'll just like gives me all the commands for that AC module. I can also do get help for, let's say, get ACVM. And I get all the information like I'm used to if I would run PowerShell locally um, when I run the, the help commandlet. I can also do get command and then, for example, see what else we have. So, for example, if I want to have an Azure AD command, I can also see that the AD module is already pre-installed. So I can also manage my Azure AD um, from Cloud Shell, not just the yeah, Azure resources. And now I can also do like a get ACVM. And then I can do, for example, something like um, lin star, And this will list every, every VM starting with lin. Um, this is new, by the way, in Azure PowerShell. I think it was 1.5. And I can also do things like, which are things like this in for the resource groups it's pretty handy so i want to list all the vms in, in the resource group called cloud shell i'm going to run uh, this and you can see it lists me all the vms running um in that in those resource groups with, the, with that name good i can also see have a quick look on the modules i'm running here so i've currently obviously those modules loaded um but I can also have much more modules available. So let's see what else I have available here directly within Cloud Shell. So you can see I have the AC module based on PowerShell core, um, which I can use all the modules up to date. And then I also have now newly uh, the Exchange Online module to manage Exchange Online in Office 365. And I also have 
the SQL Server module pre-installed in my container experience, right? So I can start managing also other resources, not just um, Azure. If I'm missing a module, I can use the, for example, the PowerShell gallery and package management. So if I do find module, this will go automatically to the PowerShell gallery uh, and start listing all the modules on the PowerShell gallery. I can also add another repository if I want to. Um, so I'm not going to throw, go through the whole list here, uh, but if I use, want to find something specific, I can use find module um, Visual Studio and then go and say, okay, oh, that's the right module and can use install dash module uh, to basically install one of those modules. However, the module needs to be based on PowerShell core, right? Uh, since, here, since we're here. So let's go to the home drive. And if I do it there here, same in the PowerShell experience, I have my cloud drive mounted here. And if I go in here, I find my scripts folder. And if I look at that folder, you can see my two scripts. Um, again, the same scripts as I had before. Those are my personal ones. I, I created them, I copied them here. I can then also go and uh, download them. If I, for example, want to modify them, I can download the file okay, in the path here. I can also go and upload a file. So for example, let's go to code, repos, scripts. Then I have here my cloud shell. So I could just simply take a script can, or any file basically and upload it directly from the browser. Um, and you can also see that the, the it's not very handy to uh, download a file like this, but there's also a PowerShell command called export file, which I basically can use to basically download every file from cloud shell. So let's just do like the windows file here and then I can do the PowerShell, download the PowerShell file and can now edit it and can upload it again. However, there's a better way to edit files and I will show you that a little bit later. Um, but this is how you can basically manage files as well, which is, I think is pretty cool. So the next thing I want to show you is uh, the Azure Drive. So the Azure Drive is based on a PowerShell provider called Chips. Um, Ships is available for also for other resources, but there, there's one built for Azure and it allows me to basically browse my Azure resources. Um, so I do connect here to the Azure Drive. And if I do it there here, first of all, I get all listed all the subscriptions I'm using here. I can then go into a subscription. I can list here again, all the stuff I have in there. You can see I have like all my resources, but they're also listed like virtual machines. So let's see what kind of virtual machines I have in there. So enter virtual machines and then do a dear and list all my virtual machines running in that subscription. I can also go back and navigate back um, to, to my subscriptions, for example. Let's quickly go back a little bit, oh, just a little bit. And then again, here I'm in my subscriptions. I can go into that subscription again. I can do go to like this time to, for example, storage accounts and then list all these storage accounts. And I can so in interact with those resources um, directly from here, uh, from, from Cloud Shell um, by browsing them uh, using Azure, the Azure Drive. The Azure Drive obviously is also available uh, on your local experience if you install it, if you install the ship module and things like that. You can also have that in your local PowerShell experience. The next thing I wanna show you is how we handle um, persistent storage. So think about, I stored those script files I want to interact with them. So let's have a quick look here um, in my home directory. I can, again, I have my cloud drive. This is a mounted file share. And I'm going to show you that in a little bit. There is a command called cloud drive or get cloud drive. And this will give me some information about the cloud drive I added. So you can see this is an Azure file share running in a storage account. Um, the storage account, you can see the storage account name here. You can also see the resource group and you can see, for example, also see the file share name. Um, and if we have a look here in the Azure portal, if I go to that specific storage account, which I pinned here, you can see um, when, I, when I go down here to Azure files, You can see here my file share called Cloud Drive. That's my, my file share where I, I can like store persistent data on it. If I browse them, you can see, I've, again, I have my scripts folder there um, and my Cloud Console folder, and we'll show you that in a bit. Um, so if I go to scripts, you can see that here are my two files I 
I, I, I saw in the Cloud Shell experience. If I go back, there's also this Cloud Console folder. And you can see there's an image folder, and this is basically my home directory. So, for example, if I install um, like a PowerShell module, this will be stored in that image file. And every time I, I start Cloud Shell, we can mount it. So, if I go back here in the Cloud Drive, I can go and add a directory. For example, just create one here. Let's call it Demo Scripts. And then if I go and go to that Cloud Drive folder, oh, scripts to it here you can see there's my new folder called demo scripts if i now go here and remove that folder again you can see that this folder is actually gone so this is based on again this is also how um, you're charged for cloud shell so you're basically charged by storage you use on 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 this in the storage account right that is the charge which is happening so let's switch back to the slides here. Um, this was the demo exploring the shell and quick recap here on what I just showed you. So first of all, you could see that we can run bash and PowerShell um, in Cloud Shell and I can switch whenever I want to. So for example, if I like to do something in, in the Azure CLI or PowerShell or in bash, let's, let's say it that way, um, I can run bash and then like I want to couple, do a couple of things in PowerShell, I can just switch to the PowerShell experience. Uh, I can directly run scripts from PowerShell, uh, from Cloud Shell. I have the Azure Drive, um, this ship's PowerShell provider pre-installed. Uh, so I can browse through my Azure resources, as you can see here. And then I have persistent storage using an Azure storage account and Azure files, uh, where I can put files and store files um, to use whenever I connect uh, to that uh, Cloud Shell. So let's go to the next demo, um, which I'm going to show you a little bit about editors and third party tools, virtual machine management and Git integration. So those are a little bit of the advanced stuff you can do um, with Cloud Shell. So again, we're going back here to shell.azure.com and I'm going to show you here quickly um, how you can basically start um, doing files with those scripts. So again, we have those scripts here. And now I want to edit them. I could download them and upload them again, but however, that would be not such a great experience. So I also have other editors like VI or Nano or um, Emacs, for example, uh, which I can use. However, since I'm not uh, not a big, uh, I never know how to access uh, to exit VI. Um, we also have something called Code, which is based on Visual Studio Code, uh, but it's a web-based version of it. Um, so it's a web-based editor for your files. So what I can do, for example, I can now edit that PowerShell script here. And you can see I get a web-based um, editor with syntax highlighting uh, directly in my console. And I can go and do changes to that specific file, for example. Then I can go and easily save that file. And then I also can easily exit the editor, right? So that is a very simple way of editing those scripts and files um, in, in your Cloud Shell environment. But again, you can choose which editor you want to use. If you're familiar with VI or prefer Nano or Emacs, uh, you can choose those as well. So the next thing, again, I quickly want to show it. I showed it before, but I want to show it again. Um, again, you have a couple of PowerShell um, stuff already pre-installed. Again, the Office 365 Exchange Online Connect tool, which allows you to, to manage your Office 365. You get a Power BI modules, you've got the SQL modules, and again, you can install whatever you like um, in terms of PowerShell modules, but also other um, uh, like executables uh, if you need something to manage your environment, right? So the next thing I want to show you here is the integration into Visual Studio Code. Sometimes you want to edit some files locally, right? It makes sense. And, but still, why not just use the same thing? So what I have here is the Azure account extension. And if we have a quick look in Visual Studio Code, what that actually can do, you can see I can sign in to Azure, can list like storage and subscriptions and things like that. But the very funny here is also open bash in Cloud Shell. So on my local installed Visual Studio Code, I can go and say open bash in Cloud Shell. And this will now open up a terminal with the authentication uh, done. Let's zoom in here a little bit. 
And then you can see here, I'm logged in now in the Bash in Cloud Shell. Um, and just to show you how it is, it, it is a Linux container, right? It's a new, based on Ubuntu, uh, which we're running. Um, so if I go here again, do it here, I can go to this Cloud Drive folder. I can see that here I have my scripts folder. And in that script folder, I have my two script files, which I put there. And I get the same experience and the same, same stuff I use basically also in my local uh, experience. I can also open up PowerShell in Cloud Shell, obviously. So let's do that quickly. Again, it will also authenticate directly with my Azure account. I gave it to you here. And again, you can see I can, can use it directly within Visual Studio. And you can see it goes to my Azure Drive. And if I do a deer here, you can see I get all my subscriptions uh, listed here as well. Okay, so let's go back to the uh, web version of the Cloud Shell. And then here is the list, um, a website, a docs website, which basically shows you a lot of those different features like the Azure Drive, but it also shows you the pre-installed tools. So we have a couple of Linux tools here. Um, we also have a lot of Azure tools like the Azure CLI, but also AC Copy, the Service Fabric CLI, different editors. And if you go more down, we even have more stuff. Like for example, the Docker client, uh, Kubernetes, or MySQL client, uh, things like for Terraform, Ansible and Chef. So we have a lot of tools already pre-installed and we also support different languages, for example, .NET Core, obviously, and Go, Java, Python, Node.js and PowerShell. So all those languages are supported within um, Cloud Shell directly without the need for you to basically install um, them by yourself. So let's go back to the Cloud Shell. Now, if you want to manage virtual machines, this is great. So sometimes you go, for example, I have my virtual, uh, my Linux virtual machine here, and I can go to connect and um, say, okay, I want to do an SSH connection to that VM. So I could use my local SSH client here, but sometimes this SSH is blocked or I just don't have to have it installed or whatever. So I can open up again, Cloud Shell in the web-based version. And we'll take a couple of seconds to load here again. You can see now, since I used it, it was faster. So I paste that here and I do an SSH into my Linux virtual machine. Um, enter the password here. And now I'm basically connected to my Ubuntu virtual machine. So I can see this is my Ubuntu virtual machine. I can now interact with them. I can configure it. Um, so I have an SSH connection. So I have a quick look here. Um, you can see that we here have an Ubuntu virtual machine running um, using the Azure optimized kernel here. So again, here I'm not like, I'm in Cloud Shell, but I'm managing a remote uh, Linux virtual machine, which I now exit. Um, this is great uh, if you already had to set that up, but what if I have want to manage a virtual machine, which I probably did not set it up. So there is a module so we'll have a look at it, so quick list, um, called PS Cloud Shell Utilities, or Utility. And there's has different commandlets in there, and a couple of them I already showed you, like export file um, and get Cloud Drive, but there's also things called enable ACVM PS remoting um, or invoke ACVM command. So Enable ACVM uh, PS remoting basically sets up PowerShell or SSH remoting um, for a virtual machine. It does the client configuration or the OS uh, configuration, but it also does um, the network security groups configuration. So let's say enable ASVM remoting, the name of the virtual machine, the resource group, the virtual machine is, uh, is in. Then we choose uh, which protocol to use. In our case, we use HTTPS. And then I say the OS type. Um, and I can again say, okay, this is Linux or a Windows virtual machine. Depending on that, it will configure the right remoting options for me. Let me choose Windows. Um, and then I'm not gonna do that right now because it will take a couple of seconds to finish or a couple of minutes better um, to finish that command. I already did that. So let's see how I can now use that. First, let's do a get credential to store my credentials, which I use for the remoting session. Username, password. And then what I can do here now, I can, for example, send a command using invoke ACVM 
command and then name again the name of the virtual machine this time again this is a windows virtual machine i can use the name of the resource group the virtual machine is in and then do script block now i can use one of the most used demo commandlets get service and then just like for example give me back all services starting with win then needs obviously needs the credentials I can run that command and this will now create a remoting connection, uh, a remote connection to my VM uh, using PowerShell remoting on the public IP address and give me back um, those Windows services. And you can see it uses my public IP address right now. So that's something you need to be aware of. Um, you probably don't want to use that all the time. So you can also disable the remoting. For a more interactive experience, you can use enter ACVM. And then again, the name of the virtual machine resource group and then I need again my credentials here and now I create a interactive um, remoting session so I can basically browse through that um, it's basically like an SSH session but it's PowerShell using PowerShell remoting you can see this is a Windows uh, machine so if I go back here for example I go to C drive uh, list um, windows here you can see up the windows folder i can also use a commandlet my favorite commandlet called chin which is, is the alias for get computer info and then this lists basically all the computer information um, like system info would would have done so you can see that this is a windows server 20, uh, 2016 data center edition uh, which version is installed and it's a full server and all this stuff I can also exit that remote session and back to my cloud shell here. Now, I showed you again the use of scripts, right? And again, I can upload files and use that scripts and things like that, uh, which is great. But what if I, for example, um, um, store my uh, scripts inside a, a repository, right? And I want to use that because there is the updated version. So this guy here created a demo repository, which stores a couple of the uh, files. So what I have here, I have a couple of PowerShell scripts. I have some um, ARM templates, uh, which I use and currently update. So think about it, that this is something like your company or your private repo. Um, and then what I'm doing here, okay, let's create first a folder here. Let's call it GitHub. I'm going to go into that folder. Quickly go into that CD GitHub. And now let's do a Git clone here of that repository. Again, this is now a public repository just for demos, but you can also use a private repository um, to, to basically clone that. Uh, now it clones all the files, it copies down all the files from that repository. And now if I have a quick look at that folder, you can see that I have here the, the, this repository. If I go into that repository, you can see I have my folders and my scripts here. And again, um, I can go into, and you can see here, I have different JSON ARM templates, which I could now use with uh, PowerShell Auto CLI uh, to basically run them. And I can also do modify, and then for example, do a git push uh, to basically bring back the changes if I want to, if I edit something here um, using my favorite editor, right? So let's switch back to the slides. Um, so this was the demo about editors and third party tools. So quick recap what I just showed you. So again, um, we have third party tools available. Uh, you can see it's not just Microsoft tools, but we have a lot of different third party tools available uh, for you ready to use. And we also regularly update them. So you also have the most current version. Uh, we give you a lot of different um, editors so if you want to use uh, vi nano emacs that that's absolutely your choice but we also give you something called code which gives you this nice syntax highlighting and basically gives you a couple of things from um, uh, from visual studio code and then we have visual studio code integration so you can connect to your azure cloud shell um, directly from visual studio code so you have exactly the same experience you have the same uh, persistent storage available to for you to use and then 
we also have a couple of tools and utilities in Cloud Shell to basically manage your Azure virtual machines to do some setup remoting, enable remoting, disable remoting, um, and access virtual machines or send commands to virtual machines to that. And then since we have Git installed, you can use um, Git repositories and clone them down to your Cloud Shell uh, and work with those scripts from that. Um, so you get an updated version and you can put all your scripts in a repository and make sure that you have version tracking, et cetera, et cetera. It's also super handy, by the way, if there is like a demo or something or you clone something else from a other um, GitHub repository or also from another Git uh, resource, you clone that down and you can start using it. So for example, if you have seen an ARM template or just start on GitHub and you want to use that, you can easily just clone it to your cloud shell and basically start using it from there. So I showed you how you can run GitHub, uh, <laughs> Cloud Shell from different, uh, in different environments. And I wanna show you a little bit more where we actually use Cloud Shell. So first of all, obviously we have, as I already showed you, we have the Cloud Shell button here, which allows you directly from the Azure portal to run Cloud Shell. You can see with a dir, you can see your persistent storage, you can see your mapped file share Cloud Drive. You can also run it on shell.azure.com. Now you can see here again, if I, Going to my file, I can see my cloud drive here. Um, just so I don't need to log into the Azure portal if I don't need to. And then we also have the Azure Docs page. So in Microsoft Docs, you find like documentation, how, for example, to create a virtual machine. We also give you the PowerShell commandlets or the CLI commandlets to how to create a virtual machine. And now I'm not sure if you ever ever seen that, but to every PowerShell command that we give you that try it button. So this starts up uh, your cloud shell directly in docs called focus mode. So again, you do the authentication against which environment you want to run that. And now you have the docs and your cloud shell running side by side. So again, this is the same cloud shell as you would run in the Azure portal or on shell.azure.com. And to quickly show you that, let's have a go to the home directory here and then see we have the cloud drive folder. If I go to Cloud Drive, you can see that I have my scripts folder here and even my GitHub folder now. And if I go into my script folder, you can see I have my two scripts here. So this is really my cloud shell. And so I can just go and copy, for example, a commandlet and paste it here and walk through this documentation and just create something if I need to, right? And I have this side by side. And I can also exit, obviously, that uh, focus mode again. And then I have the last thing I want to talk about is Microsoft Learn. So Microsoft Learn is a fantastic platform. We have, uh, I think right now, over 400 different modules which guides you through different things to learn. You can select your role you want to learn about and it gives you a list of modules. For example, this time you're an administrator, so we give you a couple of different uh, modules here, but you can also just use the search. So if you want to learn about virtual machines, for example, you can go through and we have different modules which show you different things. Um, I'm scrolling down to one which is called Create Linux Virtual Machine in Azure. And here you have a little bit of a uh, description what, what the module is about. And then you have different pieces here. Go to Introduction. This will go basically through and explain it to you. Uh, you have some text explaining how that works in Azure, um, how you use the marketplace, etc., etc. Really depending on what you want to learn. And if we go to Continue, we also give you this sandbox environment. This is also based on Cloud Shell, for example, in this, this scenario. But this is a sandbox environment. This is not your personal Cloud Shell. This is really a sandbox environment. Um, for, that, for Microsoft Learn, you don't even need an Azure account or subscription. You just need a Microsoft account to log in. And we give you this sandbox experience. So you can try out Azure for free without having an Azure account or Azure subscription. And then you can see here, just. So you see, I have also a cloud drive mounted, but if I go to that one, I have nothing in there because this is really a sandbox environment, which I'm allowed to use for a couple of minutes for free. And I can just run and, and use that stuff to work through that learning module basically and run commands. So I don't have to basically create an account first. So I can even learn without um, having an Azure account and everything for free, very, very simple to use. And we, again, we have over 400 different modules um, from very simple ones to start with to like more complex ones as well. So let's switch back um, and show you a little bit what we what I talked about. So again, 
you can have multiple experience to run Cloud Shell. So you can run it directly in the Azure portal. This is very handy if you're doing something and then, for example, you need an SSH uh, connection and you can do that quickly by starting Cloud Shell. Uh, you can do something there, you can connect to your SSH connection, things like that. If you're running kind of like go in a focus shell mode, you can go to shell.azure.com or then you can use the Azure extension, uh, the Azure account extension in Visual Studio Code, which then allows you to basically embed or connect um, to your Cloud Shell directly from Visual Studio Code. And then in Microsoft Docs, you have this try it button, which allows you basically directly connect to your cloud shell and run the command in focus mode. So you have documentation and uh, the cloud shell side by side. This is super handy, especially when you have a widescreen monitor, uh, you get this nice experience. And then we have also something called the Azure mobile app. And it turns out a lot of people don't know about your uh, mobile app. So I'm quickly gonna show you that. So think about your sit here, um, you have done your work, um, you're sitting in a bar drinking your beer and it turns out, oh shit, you forgot something or something broke or whatever. Um, you start up this Azure app. So you click on your Azure app here. This will start up the Azure app, mobile app. You can see you can browse your resources, you can take some actions, start, stop virtual machines, for example. But you can also open up Cloud Shell. Now, I forgot, for example, to uh, create that virtual machine I should have done. So I have here my Cloud Shell experience. Again, if I go into dear here, you can see I have my cloud drive. If I go into that cloud drive, you can see that I have here my GitHub and my scripts folder. And then if I, for example, go into my scripts folder, I have my two scripts here and I could directly run that script here from my phone if I want to, right? Um, don't drink your beer, don't get wasted and use that. But um, I, you kind of get it when, when this makes sense, right? So you have that remote experience um, uh, you can use. So let's go quickly back and let's summarize what we just saw. So first of all, in this session or in this video, you learned how to set up uh, the Azure Cloud Shell and Azure access Azure resources and start managing Azure resources. You also have seen that you have a couple of tools available in the console. So how you manage different, different stuff in the console. Um, you can use um, Visual Studio Code with Azure Cloud Shell. You also saw how you can manage your Azure virtual machines um, or remote manage your Azure virtual machines directly from the Cloud Shell. And then also like how you can use source control in Azure. Um, so those are the great things uh, I just showed you in this session. Uh, there's way more in Cloud Shell. Um, so if you wanna learn more, I recommend that you go to this blog post here, uh, which I have written a summary about the things I just showed you and explain a little bit more depth and also put some links in it um, so you can see through, see and, and learn and, and have a look, an overview about uh, Cloud Shell. Then I'm super happy if you follow my team's blog called itopstalk.com. This is where we blog about IT ops or IT pro related topics. Um, so this can be from Windows Server uh, over to Azure, uh, hybrid scenarios. This can be multiple things, also about PowerShell or other CLI tools, Azure DevOps. Uh, we cover a lot of different topics and if you're interested in those, um, feel free um, to basically follow that blog. And obviously also follow me on Twitter. Um, happy to have like to also answer your question on Twitter if you have anything. So with that, I want to say thank you and hopefully uh, see you another time.